looks like we're back. Uh, back over to here. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of going through the docks looking for the right thing. And this doesn't seem suitable because this looks like this, you know, has a fixed set of values. What I'm looking for is something where the user can input arbitrary text and it has like a Seems a little heavyweight. Um, so there's a ray input, right? And their example uses simple form iterator. And I suspect that simple form iterator, yeah, this component provides a UI for editing arrays of objects, one row per object, but we don't have an array of objects in the sense they mean here. We have an array of strings. Is there a C also? Doesn't look like it. Are there other iterators? Which input component to use? What if I have an array of enums? Okay. Dual list input, that's enterprise component. That looks like this. Also not what I'm looking for. Uh, checkbox group input. Nope. Um, Autocomplete array input, I think, was the thing I was looking at before. Okay. Do I have to provide choices? Um, oh, right, 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 we're trying to do the tags. We're trying to do the tags uh, for the series, like being able to set them. seems like autocomplete array inputs the only one that has like a on the fly ish <laughs> uh, option there well okay so select array input also has that 
but that's still not the UI that I want. Array input could be the thing. Check the simple form iterator documentation. Okay, so what does inline do? They're put on the same line. Okay, sure. What if I only have... Like, I think this only works if the thing has, yeah, expects an array of inputs as children. It renders these inputs once per row. It takes care of setting a different source for each row. But then you have to say, you know, text input, source, bleh. That works if you have an array of objects, but I have an array of strings. Mm. It would be nice if there was some other kind of iterator provided in React Admin. So options, um, array input might also have a, like a parse prop, except format and parse, it's too bad. I was thinking, you know, just take the array of strings and turn them into an array of objects. <laughs> uh, at the array input component level. See, it wants to, what would happen if I were to just do this? Yeah, see, source is missing. So that's not going to work. I'm pretty sure. I mean... I'm allowed to put stuff in. What happens if I click save? Okay. Okay. Maybe that does just work. What happens if I refresh? Why did the music stop? It's still there. What if I add another tag? Test two save I just didn't think this was gonna work but hey it's there it's a little um, clunkier of a UI than what I really want here but it does work cool and then I can just remove all the things category gaming checks out save all right let's update the other series gaming notify yep. um, I don't really have any tags I want to add <laughs> but uh, and then glowy telegram is I normally put it under science and technology since that seems to be the most appropriate category for like stream vods where I'm doing coding
Um, either that or education? How to? Uh, technology seems appropriate. Uh, now I just need it to shut up. Can I just be like source? Just an empty string? Does that still work? Yes. Cool. Make sure that when I remove the tag, it, it does remove itself. Awesome. Okay, success. Um, so that's kind of the first layer of the UI is being able to, to see the fields and edit them. And I, I guess if I were to go back to like uh, episodes and click create, uh, no, if I were to go to series and create, I've not added those. Okay, now we gotta do it. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. So we created these things, and now I just need to do that for the other views. imports looks good all right so now there we go we can create a new video series and set a category toggle notify subscribers add tags and we can also go into episodes and look at an episode and it also has category and all that uh, so now I'm gonna go back and fix these things So let's filter. Um, yeah. Is published? No. Series. Cloning Telegram. So here are the queued up videos. That uh, actually I was going to render <laughs> in DaVinci Resolve yesterday. After I was uh, done with the desktop. But I forgot to kick that off. So I need to remember to do that tonight. So that one is done. On to the next. So the point of the next thing that I'll be doing is to not have to ever do this again. Uh, by specifically having the bulk episode creation uh, front end uh, function uh, populate these values from the series. I think this might be the most I've actually shown me using this application that I've spent the last six plus months working on. There we go. All right. Should use this save current query functionality more. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, like I was trying to say before, that's kind of the first layer of the UI changes. Is we got the, uh, the ability to like see and set those fields, uh, and then somewhere um, there is. Let me do this. Let me close others. So we're gonna probably make changes to this file. I 
Interesting. All right, right. So we're gonna change this to actually get the category and tags and these three things from the episode. So that's one thing to change. And then in streams, no, somewhere, somewhere there is a there it is bulk episode create button. Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to change. Uh, because what I want to do, we have the series, and what I want to do is I want to pass in the data from the series that we've added. So the um, notify subscribers should be series that notify subscribers. Um, Actually, yeah, hold that thought for a second. Uh, series is possibly undefined, so we should do something better here. rather than having guards for that everywhere. Uh, let's do const. Yeah, we can shadow it. Can we? Can you do that? You, you can't shadow something like this. Yeah, no. Uh, so we need a different name. Um, nope. I would rather... Uh, I'd rather do this than try to figure out what the, the name should be. So the playlist ID, shouldn't we po be populating that on the episode? Or do we get that from the series? Is, is, the, is the playlist ID on the episode? No, no, we are getting it from the series. So we must be... No, we get that from the episode. Oh, oh, the back end. The back end does that in this case, right? So when we pull the episode uh, list, um, the back end is finding the associated series and pulling the playlist ID. Do I want to do the same thing? No. No, no, because the if, if an episode is associated to a series, then I will always want to use the playlist ID of the series. Whereas in these other cases, I might want to be able to override the category, the tags, that, that toggle for notify subscribers per episode. So that's why we're doing this copy, and that's why that line's not necessary. Um, category? Series category or 20, and just have a default there. Um, yeah. Now this is a smell. <laughs> How many places do I have? 20. Um, also the fact that, look, I find all these unrelated, oh, this is related, but here we go. So that's not related. Um, sort of related. That's not related. Neither is that or that. Not that. Not that. Okay. So we have a bunch of places where we're just hard coding the number 20. Uh, and that is not good. So 
the nor the back end stuff. And so that leaves us with three places. Um, so the input to create the episode, uh, this, okay, it is, it is optional. It could be null. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's say on the front end, it's going to, so series is not defined, then this will just be null. And then I think, hold on, let me go back to that other file. The other ones are optional too. So I think instead of trying to handle defaults here, we're just going to do this. And if series is not defined, these will be undefined. Uh, and then the backend will handle defaults. And at least that way we're not spreading <laughs> that to other places. And actually we're gonna be removing this, this one since we'll be reading that from the episode. Okay, so that allows us to read from the series these values uh, to populate into the bulk created episodes. So in the UI, what that looks like is if I'm like on a stream. So like here's a stream from 526 and then I've, uh, Start silence detection transcription on this. Anyway, uh, let's say this one here. So I have these three segments. I can click start bulk create episodes and I'll create three episode records for these three parts of the stream. And each of those episodes, because this stream is associated to the GT New Horizon series, those episodes will get the settings from the series. So notify subscribers false, category gaming, tags empty, which <laughs> it are the defaults that it was gonna get anyway, but uh, especially for the coding streams, there, there are different values that I want. Um, At some point, in fact, let me add this to the backlog. At some point, I will want to be able to upload to different um, YouTube accounts. Hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, create a make it easier to up to upload to multiple uh, YouTube accounts. Yep. Someday. All right. Um, back to the UI and back to the code. So that's done. And then the last part is this. And this, this is really straightforward because we're just gonna read from the episode. Whatever the episode record says. And that's it. So let's see what what, what commit message does uh, Copilot generate for it. Add notify subscribers, category and tags, be able to episode and Nope. This was the last message. So this is something I've seen this do, is like it writes a description of the previous commit instead of the changes that are here. What if I stage the changes? Nope. What if I do this? Nope. Okay. Let's, um. Maybe if we do them piecemeal. Add YouTube category component. Okay, sure. There you go. And then. See, and then it just, it doesn't know what to do. It's disappointing. I 
Except that's not, that's not, not what's going on at all. Come on, save me typing. <laughs> uh, upload episode to YouTube button to use episode fields. Yeah. Update bulk episode create button to include, yep. Okay, now can you do the rest? Yes. All right. Publish that branch. And uh, I think that's that. Uh, let's see. Pull requests. Oh. on uh, oh, I guess it isn't linked to the issue closes number 88 which is that Added 263 lines and removed 61. Got a little bit of uh, refactoring snuck in there. Uh, this is a lie. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, control shift F paste. Oh yeah, and I, I pasted it. I pasted the lie in a bunch of places too. Shame on me. Uh, I could have sworn I selected that and hit backspace, but see how that's a feature but whatever I, I, I clicked the button before I decided that I wanted to remove <laughs> feet from the, the commit message all right and I think I, I got that pushed up before it auto merged so I'll wait for all the checks to do their thing again and uh, we'll work on something else Surface OpenAI API errors. Right, so I think last time around, one thing that happened was I I ran out of money. <laughs> I ran out of funds on my uh, OpenAI account uh, for API use, and uh, I think the process just panicked. So probably want to do something better there. Uh, so that will probably it's a it's an easy one, right? Easy thing to tackle. Just handle errors, return them to the client. I don't even know about like. necessarily doing any kind of fancy error handling in the front end yet. I'm not too worried about that. I think if the API just does reasonable things, I think that'll be fine. Um, this is, I think, one of the first Rust 
little microservices that I made. Um, we have, this is a bit over-engineered. Uh, so we have like, you know, mod to RS, you know, complete chat. Uh, it's it's definitely ready to be to have other endpoints added, um, and I might do that at some point. But uh, yeah, okay. So I think really the only thing I need to change is this file. What's schema to RS? Oh, oh. What's this? Oh, this is where I was trying to figure out diesel, and I did that, and right, this is like one of the first things. So this is before I decided that I was gonna use um, CRUD API to put all this stuff in. So I think I can just delete uh, all of this stuff. Right, there's nothing about the database in here. We're not using the database from this, the service. So models are, it just has a test thing in here. So these things can go away as well. Bye-bye. Uh, State.rs is just the OpenAI model and key. Again, this is like probably three files too many for what it is right now, but it's fine. I, I'm not gonna move stuff around just to do it. Uh, we can remove things that aren't being used anymore. So this, this code, what's going on here? So we have a handler. It takes our app state, which has basically our API key. Um, ooh, one thing that I should do while I'm here. <laughs> uh, right now we're just dumping, we're reading. Okay, so we, we have a string. And this, the string that's inside of app state is the secret. So if we log that accidentally, uh, well, that's, that's not great. Because I might pull up the logs on stream and then someone might <laughs> grab that. Uh, let's see, so where do I have an example of using that, um, that one crate? Probably in here, right? What's it called? Redact? Oops. Let's see, cargo toml, redact. Uh, I guess we'll also do library upgrades while I'm here. Oh yeah, that, those two things are, are gone now. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I need to remember how to use redact. So there's an example. Use redact secret. And then how do we use secret? We use secret new and we wrap the string with secret new. Uh, and the point of all of this is to be like explicit, like when we want to actually read the secret out, we have to explicitly do that. And if you use anything that logs uh, the secret, Um, it just logs like a, a redacted value. Yeah, so now our app state struct is wrong. Um, you know what's fun here? I could move some of this logic into here. Would that make sense to do? Like I could pass the path and then this would read. This would do uh, stdfs read to string. Like this. And then this would be actually opening a key path. Like 
like that. And then we wouldn't even need that here. We would need that in this file. And then open API, open AI key rather is a secret. Uh, of type T, a secret string. Now, do we hmm hmm I think I'm gonna get rid of these functions I'm gonna change kind of the the way this works we're gonna make these public and then here everything changes so when we construct this client, we're gonna go, we're gonna do this. Yeah. Uh, expected string, but found string reference. Interesting. Uh, to string. And then we don't need a function call there anymore. And that converts this to now the use redact. Okay. Which has absolutely nothing to do with what I was trying to accomplish here, <laughs> which was about um, error handling. But, uh, you know, I think it's still a good thing. Okay. So, what do we have going on here? So, we're building client um, and then we are assembling parameters let's check completion parameters and so that's all of this and what are we building that from from payload and from state.openai model. Payload is a vec of simple chat message. Hmm. Do I want to extract this as a function just to like it's it's much nicer to have a function that all fits on uh, <laughs> on a single screen. Um, and it's also easier to reason about. Like we can think about individually each sub function. Well, how how can it fail? Um, which I suspect the answer is we can't really fail in normal circumstances here. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll we'll make that function. Might be something fancy. I guess not. So, chat completion parameters isn't our type, so we can't do like a like an into implementation or something like that. So, I guess maybe there's something more idiomatic to do in Rust. But hey, it's a function. Um, and then we did we use parameters anywhere else? No. Okay. Cool. So.
simpler. Um, let's not trace the whole response. Okay, so now uh, we're building the simple chat message from the response, yeah? There's more content to be generated we'll get here. Uh, except we don't actually do anything. This is just troubleshooting for when I actually need to deal with this. To do is really what this should say because that's what's going on here. Um, and then we take the original payload and add the message to the end. Okay, so message here being this. So what I want to do is um, see which way does that go if I want to like implement from Oh, that's cool. I feel like I've done this somewhere. Ooh. Oh, I don't I don't need that code. That's the opposite of what I'm currently doing. It's cool. Anyway. Uh impl from uh, from simple chat message for chat message or the other way around so that takes a simple chat message and returns a chat message I think I want to do from chat message or maybe just from the response can I do that And that should just contain whatever logic I add here. As perhaps inadequate as it might be. Yeah, same thing. Okay, cool. And then message just becomes simple chat message from response. up selecting expected some chat what do you mean uh. ah I don't have that imported if that makes sense And then the issue is that we moved response into this, and so we can't see this anymore. But that's fine, this is all for troubleshooting anyway. So I'm just gonna take this, and we're gonna dump that in here. Yep. Okay. And now we have the message. So, uh, there. So we still panic <laughs> when, when something goes wrong. That's what's happening here. But at least, you know, it's a little easier to see the broad strokes of what's going on. Um, so what we need to do is instead of expecting we're going to match
and then if we get an okay, right, because this the result of the await is a result, and it's either going to be a chat completion response or an API error. So if it's a, if it's an okay, then we just give that response back, and that ends up in this. And if there's an error, then we can trace it and we can return. And semicolon. And we just throw a 500 error for now. Um, what's in E? What is an API error here? So we have an uh, endpoint error, an invalid request error, a parse error, a file error, a stream error. And they have messages. So we could be more specific in our handling. Like so. So we can say if it's um, an AP, what? It is an API error. <laughs> can you be more specific than that? match yeah okay I mean that's the that's the type but that's not huh da, 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 da. open a I die v1 error There, though? Is there? Yeah, I didn't think so. There we go. So, um, what do the errors mean? Is the question. <laughs> like, invalid request error. That makes sense to maybe give give back like a 400 error to the client. Um, let me do something like that. Um, oh yeah, let's do into response should make things work a little bit better yeah we just have to also do that here there we go okay so now if we're getting this invalid request error back from um, the client library we're using for OpenAI, uh, then we'll give back a 400 error with the message, and otherwise we'll just throw just a gener generic 500 error, and that's better than panicking. I've decided. Okay. So, let's see what... That is part of what has happened. Can you do more? Nope. Right, so what we did was we also added redact. Is this even the right version it is? Okay, and add redact. All right, what else happened? Add JSON response format field, and no, that's not what happened. That's like from several commits ago. <laughs> uh, 
Um, close number 89. Good enough for me. Alright, and the previous pull request is now merged. Open this new one. Done a rebase update, whatever. This is all gonna get squashed anyway, so I'm fine with it. Okay, well, I think it's just about time for another break. After the break, uh, what do? <laughs> well, that should be in progress. Uh, add ability to update data and dialogue before uploading episodes to YouTube set category. That seems very appropriate with the stuff we were working on earlier. Um, I don't know if I really want to do that now. Um, like we can update the episodes, so I don't know that there's really a need to change it on the fly right at upload time. I can just like go into the episode. I'm going to at least move this down to the bottom of the backlog, at least until I have seen a real need to do that, now that I have a way to edit those things per episode. Um, have task UI elements automatically check on status. So in the UI, we got like a little task thing. Um, and this does not update live, right? So we have to like refresh. So we can see like the silence detection happens, but the transcription is still processing. But I have to like click around in the UI to see that happen or hit refresh. Um, it would also be cool if there was like a toast that appeared when the status changed. Let me put all these things in the thing. Okay. Uh, know about change in status without a refresh. Uh, and what was the other thing? Get a toast notification status of a task changes. Uh, yeah, something like that. So notifications, essentially, that are being pushed from the back end, I think are the thing to do. I think we can think about how notifications are working right now as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll think about that more and see what we can do after the break. So I'll be back in just a few minutes.